Good morning, Mr. John McNichol, co-CEO of uh, N-Wave Technology. Wonderful to have you here in Frankfurt in Germany. Thanks for taking the time for an interview with us. Um, first of all, I would like uh, to know a little bit, uh, can you summarize a little bit uh, of N-Wave, what you are doing, what the technology is, and uh, maybe uh, give us an idea of what the advantages are against the uh, old freeze-drying. Thank you very much for the opportunity to introduce N-Wave. Uh, I guess first question was about the technology, and N-Wave really has developed uh, a revolutionary method of, of dehydration, uh, which is really a drying method for uh, the food market, the biological, pharmaceutical market. Uh, the reason it's revolutionary is that the industry's been basically the same for many decades. Uh, you have three primary methods today. You have spray drying and air drying that are large, uh, continuous methods. Uh, they use both use heat, which really is the re reason to dry the material, um, which damages nutrients, it damages flavors and colors, and uh, you can't really use it for biological activities because it, it, it damages the active ingredient. So the third method that's used today is conventional freeze drying, which is a way that you dry by freezing and gradually sublimating the liquid out over many hours. It's very capital intensive, very energy intensive, very expensive. And um, our method, Rev Technology, is really being designed to create a new global standard to be much cheaper and faster than freeze drying with a much better quality than air drying or spray drying. And we use a, a microwave energy under a vacuum and the vacuum lets us adjust the atmosphere down to create a, a very gentle drying temperature at, at room temperature, even into the frozen state. So we can accelerate freeze, freeze drying or we can dry at a very low temperature. And this allows us to do it very efficiently, very quickly, but retaining very high nutritional retention, uh, flavors, colors, and biological activity. So it really is uh, a very much a revolution potential for, for, for the world industry. And we see it in many, many different markets uh, being, uh, being applied and we're building the, the relationships now in the markets to, uh, to accomplish that. Concerning the uh, year 2011, um, the last time when we saw you here in May in Germany, um, yeah, you had uh, some um, um, business collaborations in place already, but now we talk about big names like uh, Nestle, like Kellogg's, like Milne Fruits, also Mark, uh, Merck Pharma, you uh, signed off, I think, uh, two, two, three months ago. Um, can you give us a little bit more about 2011, what you have accomplished as a company in general, and how do you evaluate, uh, for example, the deal also with Merck Pharma, because in the, in the past we uh, first spoke about more about food, about fruits, yeah, about things like this, but now we talk about pharmaceutical things also, and I think Merck is uh, such a big company that this could be also a major step forward for the future. So please explain a little bit also around this area now. Well, I think, first of all, 2011 was an outs outstanding year for N-Wave. We, uh, we started the year with a major financing and we raised over 12 million dollars, our largest financing to date. And it gave us a capital to go ahead and, and purchase uh, the patents from the University of British Columbia, which was our, where the technology was originated. So we bought our patents back. We now own full control. We have no carried uh, royalty interest from the university. Uh, we get to keep 100% of our, our, our revenues going forward. Uh, we also had a very strong year, in, in, as you mentioned, in building collaborations. Uh, it started as well with our first big commercial deal in, uh, in May we signed with Milne Fruits. This was a big step forward. There have been in the business, in the fruit business, uh, doing juices and uh, powders and fresh fruits since the uh, 1950s. Very well respected supplier, uh, good brand recognition, and they have uh, decided to uh, buy uh, Rev Technology, which is, uh, has been started up as we, as we speak. Uh, the first machine uh, is going to be in Idaho. Uh, they've got a large plant that's rooms for multiple machines, and uh, we're very excited because they're, they're launching across 90% of the U.S. Uh, new dried berries, including blueberries and raspberries and blackberries, and it should be a very significant opportunity for us to grow with them. And uh, in terms of other collaborations, uh, in June we announced uh, an opportunity with Kellogg's, 
uh, which is the world's largest cereal company. We followed up with other collaborations with uh, Bonduel, uh, uh, a frozen food company for vegetables, uh, with a company called Ocean Spray, the world's largest producer of cranberries, uh, Hormel, a major meat company. All of these companies are looking at uh, using the technology for improvements and new, new brand opportunities within their uh, respective areas. Uh, we also announced the Merck Opportunity, a pharmaceutical company, and uh, for years we've uh, been working on using this technology for drawing vaccines and antibodies and other products like that. And uh, we've developed a lot of data which proves on a small scale that it works very well for this, much faster than the conventional methods they use today. Uh, now it's a matter of uh, finding the partner that can help us build it into a commercial scale opportunity and we're very excited to be working with Merck who's one of the leaders in the, in the global pharmaceutical market. John, what is also interesting uh, for our listeners and readers, um, can you explain a little bit the difference, for example, between a tier one, tier two multinational uh, company or license agreement and also I think what is really interesting, when do you expect the real first revenues, let's say we are now 2012, let's talk about 2012, 2013, 14 maybe, where do you see uh, the growth and the development of the revenue stream, hopefully, which uh, will, will um, um, be achieved from you? And uh, also what, I, what we would like to know is, um, when, will we, when will you be maybe profitable? Well, in terms of the... Uh the actual tier one companies and tier two. When we evaluate, first of all, we've had over 150 companies approach us over the last uh, basically three to four years interested in our technology. Uh, and we've been very selective in trying to focus on the ones that offer the best opportunities for the largest value to the shareholders. And we, we do that by establishing a uh, a program of evaluating the market opportunity, their, the level of interest in the type of products that, that makes sense with our technology. And a tier one really is, is a company that has a big size. They're typically a multinational company. Uh, sometimes they're a global leader in a particular uh, field that we're working with them. Uh, sometimes they're just very large in a certain region, uh, but they're very big and they have potential that we see for royalty streams of, you know, five million, maybe as high as 50 million per annum, you know, three to five years into a licensing where they're fully adopting the technology. So this is what we would look as a, as a tier one. A tier two is more of a company that uh, might be an entrepreneurial company starting something new or a bit smaller company in a market that is fragmented and uh, in the world where you'd have many, many different uh, competitors. Uh, in these markets, we, we still feel there's opportunities. Uh, we're very selective which ones we would pick, but we'd like to still work on some of these opportunities uh, where they probably would have a smaller royalty threshold, maybe between one to five million, uh, once they get you know, fully established with the technology. Um, in terms of just the commercialization process, uh, we anticipate our first you know, real royalty revenues start by the second quarter this year with Milne, who is uh, starting up this, uh, the first plant uh, for the, uh, the berry products. Um, we hope that will grow nicely through the, the year as they ramp up that first machine. Um, we anticipate, you know, growth could come from them with other machine orders once they get established at the first one. Um, we also expect to sign you know, up to three commercial agreements with Tier 1 companies. Uh, we've been working, as you know, with, uh, with Nestle, with um, uh, Grupo Bimbo, with, uh, with Kellogg's, you know, through 2012. All three of these companies are looking to make some decisions in terms of the technology. Um, and in terms of, of, of revenue growth, we don't really forecast at this stage. Uh, we anticipate that it's going to start building through this year into the next few years. Uh, and if we get the broad, widespread interest, uh, including another, hopefully four maybe opportunities for new collaborations in 2012, and the conversion of existing, the existing eight that we have, we should see a very, very strong growth as we go into 2000, 
13, 14 and, and beyond. So if I understand you correct, it looks like that uh, you have a fantastic growth strategy for the next, uh, let's say, three to five to ten years even. Um, let's, let's come uh, a little bit more to the figures and numbers of the company. What is your current cash position? Um, what is your burn rate now per annum? Will your burn rate rise a lot when, as, as you grow the business, of course. Um, what can you imagine to pay dividends on some stage? And uh, what will be your future strategy, uh, let's say, if you really achieve large um, um, license agreements and let's say you make a 50 or 100 million uh, dollar revenue each year and uh, as, you, as we saw in your balance sheet, your cost structure is really tight at 4 million dollars per, per annum now. Um, can you explain a little bit about this strategy policy, what you think your company will do there for the shareholders also? Well, first of all, um, we evaluated our technology and, and the best way to enter the market and When we, we looked at all the, the different options from selling equipment to, uh, to making products ourselves, we realized the best possible way to create value was to use the, the advantage of the technology and the fact that it's a patented proprietary method to generate royalty stream, um, which means that every customer that buys the technology has to sign a license and pay a royalty on the use of the license in the long term. And the reason for that is it's very high margin. Um, you have no real costs associated to, the, to that. We've bought back the university patents, so we, we now own 100% of our own technology. And in, 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 in light of that, we are in a position where we can build you know, revenue streams with very, very high margin. And once we accomplish uh, profitability, because of that, our goal is really ultimately to have a high growth company where we take our current eight or ten opportunities, add another eight or ten opportunities, continue to add in different sectors of the, of the drying industry to build a, a very fast-growing revenue stream. And because it's high margin, pay a high percentage of that out as long-term dividends for the shareholders. So in addition, we have also um, a very healthy balance sheet. Um, right now, we have about ten and a half million dollars of cash in the bank. Uh, we also have um, warrants. They're not quite in the money right now, but if they were exercised fully uh, by August, uh, they would be generating about nine million more in cash. So um, we're burning this year, which is our core burn rate, plus the money we spend on new equipment development, somewhere around four and a half million, which is, which is being reduced because of the revenue. We're getting revenue streams coming in from uh, collaboration agreements and from commercial uh, royalties, the first ones here coming up. Uh, so. We anticipate, even at the end of the year, somewhere between six to 15 million of cash in the bank, uh, uh, depending on if the warrants get exercised. So we, we're very, very healthy position. Very, uh, we continue to manage your cash very prudently and uh, focus on investing in the, in, the right, in the right areas. Last question, John. Um, can you just summarize a little bit again the uh, key opportunities? What are you pursuing now? And also, uh, maybe can you give us uh, again a little bit uh, an idea, what are your next targets and your next plans, let's say the next three to six months, what you really want to achieve there? Well, I mean, I think overall in 2012, we see this as a, as a big year for us. Um, as you know, since the middle of 2010, we've added eight major tier one multinational collaborations. Um, and as I mentioned, at least three of these collaborations are expected to make some decisions on the technology. So our goal obviously is to is to convert you know these into commercial licenses and get purchase orders for equipment and begin building new streams for the revenue. Um, we would hope that we could have a chance to get one of them done in the first six months this year and you know a few in the second part of the year. Uh, I think that would be a, an excellent step in the right direction. We also continue to work with the other partners. Uh, we're working on not only making sure the collaborations move forward in a proper way, uh, sometimes there's other areas within some of these companies that are interested to expand the evaluation of technology, so we're, we're working towards those goals. We also see new collaborative partners. Uh, as I mentioned, we're working on at least uh, probably another six companies that are very interested. Uh, we hope at least four of those might become 
collaborative partners in 2012 to add to the pipeline that we already have. Uh, again, in all new areas, that uh, different areas that our other collaborations aren't involved with. Um, we also see this as a big year to, uh, to build uh, the organization for delivery of machinery. As you know, our goal isn't to be a machine supplier, but we are working with uh, Hans Binder here in Germany, uh, another Canadian company called Axton, uh, that can be companies that will take orders and deliver equipment uh, for us once we sign licenses. So we want to be in a position to be able to handle multiple orders for 2012 as we convert the uh, licenses uh, and be ready to build aggressively as you know these uh, these companies begin uh, taking on the technology for future. Um, we in addition have been working on expanding one of our platforms called QuantaRev. Uh, we've just announced uh, earlier uh, this month uh, we've completed a five-foot engine, which is a wide, almost three times wider than our pilot machine. And we're going ahead to build a, a machine which could be up to 500 kilo an hour of process capability. This is a big, big step forward for us. It would re you know, be the biggest uh, technology platform that we've developed so far. And uh, we should have the designs finished by the end of, uh, end of March and begin building this equipment by April. And hopefully we'll find one of our current partners that will adopt that technology as we get ready to complete that by the end of this year. So that's really the focus and uh, we're very excited about the potential. I think this re represents a, a real breakout year for N-Wave with, uh, with all of the, the, the very good developments we have here today in the pipeline and uh, completing them uh, going forward. Well, John, sounds terrific. Thank you very much uh, for taking the time and the opportunity to speak to us. You had a wonderful 2011 and uh, it looks like that you have uh, the green light and go now for the commercial revenue and everything in 2012. We wish you all the best, all the best for success and thank you very much.